In the last few videos I began assembling the electronics for my latest CNC machine, fitting those into an enclosure, wiring up the various components, including a stationary touch probe button. While I'm waiting for a few things to arrive in the post, I'm going to wire up a terminal which I may later use for a laser engraving module. This one here in particular is going to take the 5 volt PWM signal from the controller on two pins and the 24 volt from the power supply unit to allow me to use this op laser engraving module. You may remember a while back I was sent a 6 watt diode laser module by a company called op laser and well I still have it and it needs somewhere to go. This process should be pretty simple because the laser module has onboard circuitry to accept the 24 volt power and PWN signal and the Gradus M1 Pro controller has a separate terminal for a 0 to 5 volt PWM signal and another 0 to 10 volt for an inverter. Because I've got components inside, I'm going to make sure the hoover's on just behind where I'm drilling the hole. I'm now soldering the panel mount and I've started by tinning each of the four cups. I then wire a red cable for the 24 volt DC power and a black cable for the ground. I also add heat shrink to the solder ends to hide my shoddy soldering skills. Only joking, it's to keep them snug, like a thick pair of house socks. I've added boot ferrules to the ends which will screw into the terminals on the control board. I'll also wire the PWM to the panel mount with the brown wire going to the PWM ground and the blue wire to the PWM positive. I've wired the 24 volt directly to the power supply unit and the PWM directly to the controller. This is the second layer with the 4 channel relay module for the controller outputs. To neaten up the wiring I've daisy chained the power from the relay module to the fan which cools the control board stepper drivers. I'm now wiring the cable from the socket to the docking station which will hold the laser module. And it's the same thing of soldering and writing notes and crimping wires and so on and so on. This is the docking station for the laser that I happen to have. So that's what it looks like and I'm just going to check it now with a voltmeter. You could wire the power coming to the module via a lockable switch directly next to the terminal for additional safety, but as the laser is dismantleable, I know I can always pack it away when I don't want to use it. You may notice that as the laser turns on, the surrounding area turns red. Now that's not the laser's doing as I've wired some LED lights to the spindle enabled terminal which turn red when the spindle's on and white when it's off. This is a safety feature which I'll overview later in the video. Now the unusual thing that happened here was the LED lights flickering upon startup. Again, so. Okay, here goes one last try. Now, if I had not mounted the laser, turned the control box on, and only then clipped the laser in place, I would not have seen the flickering lights. It seems that when everything is plugged in together and turned on, the draw from the laser results in this behavior. I could add a capacitor along the power supply to the laser, but this could result in the laser remaining on for a short period of time while powering down. 
Capacitors can be dangerous if you touch the contacts and they discharge electricity. And if you look at the panel mount terminal, the pins are exposed on the socket while the terminal on the plug are sunken into the plastic. The female is in fact a male and the male is in fact a female. And this assumes a particular direction they should be used. So I need to do a little more research, but potentially I may need a separate power supply unit for the laser. But in the meantime, I'll show you how I wired up the under gantry LED lights. Okay, I've just mocked up some wiring for some LED lights which connect to a relay module which is triggered by the spindle enable pin on the controller. Now, what this allows me to do is to create a signaling system on the CNC machine when the uh, controller is in different states. So when the machine turns on, and I'll just turn it on now, you get a white light which will illuminate from underneath the gantry and when the spindle is on, which I'll just turn on using the software, it becomes red, red for danger. I've mocked up the wiring for the LED lights to this barrier block. The red cable is the 24 volt power coming in which goes to the black cable on the LED strip. The blue, green and red cables correspond with the LED light colours. When connected to ground their corresponding colour turns on. Different combinations make different colours so if all three wires are connected to ground the strip produces a cold blue white light. In the shot on screen I've used two 500 milliwatt 24 volt BZX55C Zener diodes to create the circuitry needed to swap between the two lighting states. But later I realized I only needed one diode. And further later still, I swapped the RGB light strip to RGBWW, where the WW stands for warm white. Just place the heat shrink on and another piece over here cover the wires once I've soldered them. Okay, I've already placed a wire through the trunking. I just need to get this around the other side and maybe to the right length. Double-sided tape is terrible. It's not sticking. Okay, you can see I've just wired this all up. Everything is exposed because I'm just testing it out and then I'll redo it and try and make it a bit neater. The cable for the white light went via the normally closed terminal on the relay module which represents the idle state and the red cable via normally open which closes when the spindle is enabled. The blue lights were affecting filming in the workshop because the fluorescent lights had a different Kelvin temperature to the LED one, so I replaced the entire thing, as I mentioned earlier, with the RGBWW, which needed no diodes at all. So back to the flickering lights. I had a brain fart and tried to add a box voltage regulator between the power supply and the power cable to the laser, hoping that the regulators on board circuitry might act like a soft start, but it didn't make a difference. One thing to notice is that it's not the coolant and the mist signals which are flickering, but specifically the spindle enable. So I decided to wire the laser's 24 volt power via a latching circuit which I would energize after the main control electronics had been turned on. And when I want to turn the power on I simply press the on button, the circuit latches and in this case you can see the LED is on and then I simply break it to turn it off. My thinking was this could delay the draw power from the laser, but this also didn't work. I tell you already that it isn't going to work, and I'll just show you what it does. 
I tried two variations of this wiring via the four channel relay module which I was using for the outputs from the control board. However this method resulted in all the relays turning on when I pressed the on button. You'll just have to believe me as I wasn't paying attention to where the camera was filming so you can't see the LED lights on the relay module. I then moved the latching circuit via a separate relay but this resulted in the frickling frickling the flickering relay yet again. So I don't think the issue is with the laser module drawing too much power. I also tried wiring the ground of the 36 volt and the 24 volt power supply units together in case this behavior was the result of a grounding issue, but this resulted in the same behavior. I then noticed something unusual that I hadn't noticed before. When I turned the machine on or pressed the hard stop button, the lights on the relay module where the spindle enable was plugged into would flicker. The output of the spindle enable pin seemed to be switching or oscillating on and off, although not enough to energize the relay, but enough to be noticeable via the LEDs. Okay, I'm gonna try something uh, now just to see whether removing this relay module and placing an LED light on the uh, spindle enable pin and ground still results in uh, power outputting while the machine is turning on or resetting. So I've got my LED here. This seems too consistent to be a coincidence. And come to think of it, my older Phoenix CNC controller did a similar thing when I would reflash the firmware where the onboard relay module would toggle on and off. Now I was planning to use a delay timer relay module to try and hide these effects by delaying the power to the output relay module, but luckily I found a few illuminating articles which have pointed me to a solution. It seems that it is a feature of the 18 mega 328 bootloader that causes the D13, or in my case the spindle enable pin, to toggle. And I quote, cause things that randomly when using this pin as an output to control something like a relay, which is what I'm doing. To fix this, the article suggests downloading the OptiBoot source file from GitHub and compiling the bootloader making sure the line or lines LED underscore start underscore flashes equals zero and not three, which it would normally be set to. There also happen to be a direct link to an already compiled hex file. So I use this thing here, a USB ASP device, along with a piece of software called AVR Dudes to burn that hex file onto the controller's Arduino. After doing this, the lights had stopped flickering, but I then noticed the spindle enable signal wasn't able to trigger the relay input, but would trigger if the flood enable signal was also plugged into another input along the same relay module. If I send a M3 or M8 command, both the spindle enable and flood enable relays would turn on at the same time, and these couldn't be isolated. I suspected this was a grounding issue, and the final thing I did was connect the ground of the spindle enable pin to the ground of the four channel relay module and this seemed to make the unwanted behavior disappear. Here I'm gonna just show you the laser module plugged in and powering up and that the LED under gantry lights are not flickering. And I also turned the laser and the spindle on at the same time. I was wearing laser goggles and in future when I'm using the machine, I will have to unplug one device when using the other. take this out I'm not going to be using that. In this shot I'm showing you the output relay module turning on and that the spindle enable pin is not causing the small onboard LED lights to flash. And I also turn on the spindle enable pin with the M3 command and later the flood enable pin with the M8 command. Now I've turned off the spindle with the M5 command, waiting a moment before turning the flood enable off with the M9 command. As to why gerbil controllers are sent out without the amended bootloader is a bit of a mystery to me, but I would recommend everyone do this, especially if they plan to use relay modules to interface from the output pins to their tools.
Thank you.